started back at school. I hope uh, the school week has gone well for you. Just know that um, whether you're faculty or parent or student, we're praying for you. I know um, the school year looks a little different right now, but um, FCC is definitely praying for you guys. So just hold tight to that. If you've paid any attention to uh, what's going on in the world right now, you may be overwhelmed, you know, from wildfires in California to a double hurricane which is, you know, what I often to refer to my twins as Josie and Eddie as, to uh, racial injustice and civil unrest, to child trafficking, and there's just, you know, a global pandemic, and now doing school virtually, it just, things are different and a bit more difficult. And um, it just seems like we're at the end of our rope and not sure where to go. Uh, throw in any personal problems or issues you're having right now, and. You may just be questioning, you know, what's going on? What in the world are we doing? How do I handle this? And um, I think it's important to, to note that Jesus tells us in, you know, John 16, um, in this world, you will have trouble. He warns us ahead of time. He lets us know that this world is gonna offer us trouble. It's gonna be hard for us. It's not gonna be easy all the time. It's, it's not, our final resting place so you know this is a place where we experience difficulty and hardships and just things aren't always the way they should be and so um, when I think of the troubles that we face in this world my mind often goes to Moses and the Israelites who um, wandered in the desert for 40 years if you're familiar with the story you know that um, God had freed the Israelites from the Egyptians and had freed them from slavery and had promised to lead them to a special land where they would be well taken care of. Now the Israelites um, complained constantly. Um, you know, there was not enough food. The food wasn't good enough. You know, we had it better in Egypt. Why did we leave Egypt if, if we were going to have it so hard here? And you know, if eventually, you know, God had um, set up to where um, they could see the promised land. And, you know, Moses sent ahead 12 spies to check out the land. And if you're familiar with your um, Sunday school songs, you know that 10 of those spies were bad and two were good. You know, 10 of the spies talked about, yeah, there's, it's the land of milk and honey. It's flowing and it looks good. But there's some, you know, big people, some big troops there that we're not going to be able to overcome. And then you have um, Caleb and Joshua who are like, hey, sure, yeah, they were, they were big guys, but we can take them. You know, we can take them. We have God on our side. We can do this. Um, and, you know, there was, there was discord and there was trouble. And because of this doubting, um, God had said, okay, you all do not get to see the promised land now. You were wonder for 40 years. You know, this was a trip from Egypt to the Promised Land that was supposed to be quick. It was supposed to take days, not decades, but because the Israelites had grumbled so much and because they had doubted God and didn't fully trust Him at, you know, at every turn, they end up experience, experiencing hardships. So, if you're anything like me, that sounds a lot like, you know, what we do day to day. You know, we look at this world and we look at the troubles we have and we grumble and we think, well, why? Why do things have to be like this? Why are things so hard? And you no, know, things are so hard because, again, Jesus promised that this world is not going to be easy. This world is going to offer us um, hardships and trouble. And that's because, you know, this is not our final home. This is our wilderness in a sense. You know, we have to travel through this wilderness to get to the other side, which is heaven. And um, much like, you know, the Israelites were wondering, we're doing the same thing, you know, this is our temporary home. And all too often, you know, we're, we make ourselves too comfortable here. We like it here a little too much. And um, the Bible actually urges us to live as temporary citizens, as foreigners in this world. So, you know, once we kind of realize that this world is not our home, this isn't our final resting place, things kind of uh, fall into place a little better. 
So, you know, daily we have to choose to seek God and to trust his plan. Recently, I read um, an article online that talked about, you know, heaven and this world. And one of the quotes that I kind of walked away with that resonated with me said, For the unbeliever, this world is the best life will ever be. For the Christian, it is the worst life will ever be. So sometimes, you know, this world is okay. Sometimes we enjoy it. And, you know, that's okay to enjoy the things of this world um, because God places things, you know, in this world for us to enjoy. But um, sometimes life's not easy. Sometimes this world isn't easy. But um, Paul tells us in Ephesians, you know, he reminds us who's working, who's ruling over this world and, and this present darkness that we sometimes live in. And the Gospel of John tells us that, you know, that ruler comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So, you know, we're given constant warnings that this world isn't going to be easy. It's not going to be the best. Um, but as followers of Jesus, we have a promise of paradise, a promise of no more pain, no more suffering, no tears. The pains and the heartaches that come with living in this world are one day going to be no more for the follower of Jesus. And I don't know about you, but, you know, I find my heart looking to that and clinging to that promise more and more these days. Um, I'm not sure where you are in life right now, but I encourage you to, you know, hold fast endure this time in the wilderness and just constantly keep looking to the promise of Jesus. You know, Jesus promises redemption and he promises restoration for his people. And you know, if we hang tight, if we keep seeking him and keep following him, there will be redemption and restoration for us. Um, and so, you know, earlier I referenced, you know, where Jesus has promised us that, you know, this world, there will be trouble. But he goes on to say, but take heart. I've overcome this world. And, you know, that's where our peace is found. Our peace is found in that Jesus has already um, overcome this world. He's overcome sin. He's overcome death. And because of that, his promise holds true. And we can, you know, fully rely on that. Um, I hope you have a good rest of the week. I hope that, you know, whether your schoolwork, whatever you're doing, I hope those things go well for you. And we look forward to seeing you this Sunday for our special Throwback Sunday service. See you Sunday morning.